Welcome to Unit 5, Part 1. 20% of this unit is covered on the PHR exam and 14% is covered on the SPHR exam. The class objectives for this lecture are to review key concepts, terms, and laws from Unit 5, Part 1, Compensation and Benefits. We will explore tips and best practices for learning the material and examine strategies for understanding terms and concepts. The topics covered will be early labor movement, union representation of employees, employer unfair labor practices, union unfair labor practices, collective bargaining, maintaining a non-union status, grievance systems, and employee discipline systems. Let's put a definition to employee relations. Employee relations is the working relationship between the employer and the employee, which encompasses the rights of each party, how decisions are made, and how problems are resolved. In union companies, this function is also called labor relations or industrial relations. A major step toward establishing industrial peace occurred when federal laws endorsed collective bargaining as the primary method of resolving disagreements. This section briefly reviews the history of labor unions during the past two centuries. While this information is not typically tested by HRCI, understanding the history of the labor movement is essential for understanding the labor laws that exist today. Prior to the National Labor Relations Act, most working conditions were deplorable. Small groups of employees would band together to attempt to get their employer to make better working conditions. They were met with hostility and often violence. In 1935, the National Labor Relations Act, also known as the Wagner Act, established the legal right for labor unions to exist. During the 1800s, four major tactics were used against unions. Conspiracy doctrine, court injunctions, yellow dog contracts, and antitrust statutes were the four major weapons used against labor unions. A conspiracy doctrine is a weapon used against labor unions in the early 1800s where judges found that unions caused or planned to cause an injustice to other people or society. A court injunction is a court order that directs a person or group to refrain from pursuing a course of action. In most cases, an injunction is used to protect property rights, which include the rights to hire workers, to sell goods, and to run a business in a profitable manner. A yellow dog contract is a statement employees were required to sign in which they agreed not to join a union. Now, antitrust statutes are used widely today. They are designed to protect consumers from predatory business practices by ensuring that fair competition exists in an open market economy. Union leaders thought the Sherman Antitrust Act of 1890 would protect them from powerful and hostile corporations. Although this law made no specific references to labor organizations, Unionists found that it limited a variety of vital union activities. Unions were interpreted by the courts as illegal combinations in restraint of interstate commerce when they attempted to strike an employer or to boycott an employer's products. The National Labor Relations Act, and this is one historical piece of information you must know for the exam, regardless of if you're taking a PHR or SPHR, and you also need to know this for your career in human resources. The National Labor Relations Act, also known as the Wagner Act, established employee rights to self-organize, to form, to join, or to assist labor organizations, to bargain collectively through representatives of their own choosing, to engage in concerted activities, and you need to know that term, concerted activities, for the purpose of collective bargaining. 
Congress identified five unfair labor practices and declared them unlawful. It is an unfair labor practice for an employer to interfere with, restrain, or coerce employees in the exercise of their rights. It is an unfair labor practice for an employer to dominate or interfere with the formation or administration of a labor union. It is an unfair labor practice for employers to allow union membership or activity to influence hiring, firing, promotion, or other employment decisions. It is an unfair labor practice to discharge or discriminate against an employee who has filed a charge with the National Labor Relations Board or given testimony to the NLRB. It is an unfair labor practice for an employer to refuse to bargain in good faith with representatives of the employees. Thank you for listening. This concludes this lecture.